This is how I trim the pour overs. So they were thrown a few days ago. Nautilus slip was added uh, the day after they were thrown and then they were wired off. And then what I do is I sit them on a wooden bat, on my old wooden bat. Um, so they dry up and the rim dries slightly more than the base. So it's super dry when you put it in the gift and grip, well, super dry, but it's firmer. Like I wouldn't want to be try trimming that is past trimming dryness, which means this is perfect for trimming. That's a bit stronger and won't get warped by the gif and grip. And I try and do that with everything that I trim in it, just because you can end up with trying to get a pot to everything still soft. That's the nice thing with being able to control the drying is you can get away with that a bit more. So what I do with the pour overs is trim the base flat, trim, neaten up the, the pour over hole through the center and then put a chan a carve a kind of recess down in the, the meat of where the, the neck meets it. So there's a lot of clay underneath that because it all comes together there. And what you can do is trim down into that, which makes it a bit lighter, but also gives this a spout quality um, so that it doesn't go sideways. It should just drip directly from it, which goes something like, so quickly just remove all the debris from that. Then what I would like to do is down, open that out, and neaten up. And I just use these cheap loop trimming tools. I've never used a bison or anything that expensive. I have a mud tools trim all, do no, sorry, do all trim tool. I think that's what it's called, which is very good. Um, but they're relatively expensive compared to the cheap loop tools and they do go blunt and they do sharp to lose their shape after you've trimmed a lot of stuff. Whereas you can just get a new one of the cheap ones. So the, the tools I do use, the Zeem, um, I don't know how you say it, but I assume, because these are small and very sharp. It makes them very convenient for something like this. So you can just carve out and check the inside. Yep, I don't want to go too much further in from that. But basically, you've now got, I do them in so I use the square one for opening out, but then there's a rounded one, which you, means you can have no sharp corners at the bottom, just makes glazing it a bit easier. So now just put that out and get that wall more vertical. All, you can check, the nice thing with having it like this is you can check on both sides to see where the rest of the clay is. So the bulk of the clay is literally just down there. And so I've trimmed into that, there are gonna be no weak spots particularly. And then you can check, see how thick that is. Um, and then what I do is, it's harder to brace when you're standing up, but. So this will be a raised foot that um, will stop it sliding sideways off mugs. So pretty much, well all the mugs I make and pretty much any standard mug, unless it's really small, will fit, that will fit inside. And then you've got this big flat platform out here, so it will fit any mug up to a massive one um, and it can't slide off because of the raised bit there. Just 
check the thickness, that's still pretty good. tools rib to burnish everything you should be able to see it so do that change color and what I'm doing is smoothing the clouds so that's feels polished now um, and with any clay that's not too groggy that will stay more or less like that so you, you basically don't need to sand them after you've done that you can still sand them and it will improve it slightly but it already feels like a sanded pot from the burnishing. It's much faster to do it at this stage. Um, saves a whole lot of time later on. So I would recommend doing that to just about everything. Uh, a bit too small. These ball tools, I don't know what they're really called, the modeling tools are fantastic for um, burnishing any intersections with things. So what I would do is, you can see this one's going a bit rusty because I've worn through the veneer on it. But. So now that curve where it comes up is not only uniformly rounded, it's burnished um, and it's very difficult to do that any other way and have it come out perfectly. But with those it's um, as simple as that. The other tools I like are the silicon modeling tools because they don't do quite as good a job as the balls but because it's because they're softer which means that for things like that you're not leaving a, a hard edge on it. If you tried to do that with the balls you'd see its path. So now that bit in there is burnished into a fairly sharp lip and that is that logo stamp and support underneath because now I've trimmed through the clay or oh, it's weaker and then that's it so that will go sit on the side for a few more days until it's completely dry and then get fired <laughs>